Well, good evening, everybody. It's good to be here again. Uh, I was reading several scriptures, and um, I had read up pretty much all over the Bible, and I came to a place in First John chapter number two. And it was almost sort of like the Lord just said right there is where I want you to speak from. Um, many people love the things of the world. Many people literally worship the world. I don't think they mean to. You take a lost person. He's not aware of worship in the world. He don't even know what to worship even means. Does a person that doesn't know the Lord, do they love their family? Yeah. Do they love their friends and neighbors? Sure they do. They have respect for them. But this man, John, was writing some verses in here in chapter 2. I just want to look at them very quickly. In verse 15 is where I'll be. It says, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. Love not the world. Is he saying don't love your family? No, he's not saying not to love your family. What he is saying is don't put nothing ahead of me. Um, don't put anything ahead of me. The way that we protect our family is we make sure that we put God above everything. We put God above it all. He says here, love not the world. Don't have more respect for this world that's going to go away. Have respect for me, the one that made the world, the one that put everything together, the one that designed it from the foundation of the world. Don't... um don't do anything that would make the world um, be your number one love and your number one priority. Don't don't do that. Don't make it your number one priority. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world, the things that affect us. Things that affect us is things like money, automobiles, homes, jobs, things that give us a certain amount of pride in our life. He doesn't want us to love that more than we love him. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. What he's saying is, if anything you love more than you love me is telling us that Father is not in him, according to this verse right here, talking about the person who loves the things of this world, if any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him, not as it should be. If I let the cares and the affairs of the world be more important to me than what God should be to me, 
then it's almost like I'm saying to God, God, I don't love you as much as I love the world. Do you think God is going to be put in second place? Do you think that he's pleased with man being in second place? For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, for all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, that's the things of the world, the sin of the world, the things that we watch, the things that we look at, the things that captivates our mind. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh. He knows if it's the lust of the flesh because it's also going to turn in and the lust of the eyes. See, what good is it to look at the flesh if you don't have eyes to look at what you're lusting at? See, he's talking about the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes. And then it goes along with saying, and the pride of life. See, pride goes with that lustful eye that we love that stuff more than we love God. Is not of the Father. The pride of life is not of the Father, but it, but it is of the world. I think the writer right here is actually really saying things to us that he wants us to know about. Anytime that we put the world ahead of him more, then how is the Lord going to use us in the way that he wants to use us if people are drug into the mud and the mire of the flesh? The flesh of the world, the flesh of the eyes, the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. See, the world has such a dominating effect on people. See, as long as the devil can make the grass greener, as long as he can make the paycheck last longer, as long as he can keep you in plenty of this and plenty of that, and plenty of all the other things, then we don't really see a real need in going before God. We don't really see a need of hungering before God because all of our Finances is taken care of. All of our things that we own, our things that we love to do is all taken care of. So it keeps us where that we don't really have to love God because we've got this job, we got that job, we got the other job. The Bible says in, in the time past that we're going to go through things that is in this life. I was reading it earlier, but I don't remember where it was that I was reading it, but it was actually talking about that. And the world passeth away. See, the world as we know it, the things that millionaires have, the things that millionaires owned, all passes away. It goes by the wayside. The world passes away and the lust thereof. The lust of the world. See, people are so satisfied today with the love that they have today that they don't feel that there's a real 
there's a real problem because I've got everything in the world I need to make my life happy. A lot of people don't know what real true happiness is all about. They're basing everything on their life on their pleasures. The pleasures of this life. The pleasures of the world. The things of the world. The lust of the world. Think of people that you know that might be rich. All of a sudden one day maybe their health might go. What happens then at that time? And the world passeth away and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. What that means is, is that when you have the will of God, your love of this world is only temporary. You leave this world aside because you see that will of God that is in heaven when you get to heaven. It lasts forever. The things of this world doesn't last forever because the Bible said, and the world passeth away and the lust thereof. You know, there was one place in the Bible where it talked about the world burning up, catching on fire. Now, I believe where I was reading that was referring to the time of the, after the tribulation time. But regardless of when that happens, how many people is going to be prepared and ready to see that everything that in, in this life that is valuable is basically going to be burned up? There's not going to be really nothing here of any value because the world is going to come and the world is going to go. You know, there's things that I love about my family. I love my grandson. I don't get to see him like I'd like to as much as I'd like to, but I love to have him come over. I love him to be around me. I love to play with him. I love to watch him. I don't think that's the kind of the world that the Lord is too concerned with. I think the Lord knows that we're going to love the innocency of a little child. I don't think the Lord is, is when he says up here, love not the world. I don't think that he's talking about not loving my grandchild. Does he want me to love my grandchild more than I love God? No. Does he want me to serve God more than I would serve my grandson, my wife, or whoever? Listen to the scriptures here. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. Is that pretty self-explanatory? If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. If I love the world more than I love God, then the Father doesn't have possession of me. He doesn't possess me in the way that he wants to. Does he, does God want me to love my grandson? Absolutely. But I would need to treat him the way I believe that God would want me to treat him.
For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father. You notice what it said right there? The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father. But it, it, but is of the world. The flesh, the eyes. Does God want me to look at my grandson's eyes when I see him? Yeah. Does he want me to look at the flesh? There's nothing wrong with going outside looking at a tree. Nothing wrong with, with admiring nature. Does he want me to put nature above him or in front of him? And the world passeth away. You take a person that dies, they pass away. Their life is, is over with. But a person that knows the Lord, when their life passes away, It says, and the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God abide forever. Abide where? Abide in the Lord. He wants me to abide in him. The reason that the world, the people in the world love the world is because it's satisfying to them. People love the satis satisfying of the flesh of this world. But I want to be the bearer of bad news. This world is not going to last forever. This world is going to pass away. Now, some people will go and say, well, that won't be in my lifetime. No, it very well could be. It very well could be. We don't know when the Jesus is coming. We don't know when the Lord is coming. Should he want me to be watching for his appearing more than the cares of this life? I would think so. And the world passeth away. And the lust thereof. See, the lust is going to pass away as well. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. We're not going to abide in this, in this world. Now, what God does when he comes back, he comes back to the world after the tribulation is over and what God deems necessary to do during the time of when God sets his kingdom up here on earth, that's down the road. I don't think no one really knows exactly what we're going to go through during that time. We can read the Bible. We can study the Bible. We can know what the Bible says. But nobody has experienced that life that is here to tell us today what that life is about. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever, meaning they never die. The, the Bible said up here that the, the world passeth away and the lust thereof. The lust pass, passes away too. Our vision of our eyes pass away. Our bodies pass away. But here's the thing. On that day, the Lord comes and gets his people, takes them to glory. The other people waits for their judgment to come on them if they happen to not know the Lord. 
and he deals appropriately with the people that don't know him. I hope you know him today. I really do. I hope that you know him. Elderly Ministry is the website. There you have a menu tab at the top of the page. And you look to the left and you'll see a phone number. You're welcome to call that number. It's there for you anytime that you want to chit chat. Anytime you want to talk. If you got questions about what the Bible says and what the Bible doesn't say, then by all means call. Leave a message when you call, and I'll return your call. I have email you can use if you're more comfortable with email. We can get together over the cell phone and talk whatever it is that you have need of. We don't charge anything. Everything here is free. There's no charge for any of this. If you need help, reach out. If you're lost, if you're undone without the Lord, reach out. Don't wait and remember one day that you heard that the world is going to pass away. Don't wait too long. The Bible says today is the day of salvation. Today, if you hear his voice, harden not your heart. This is just a very simple little warning to us today. Don't love the world. The world's going to let you down. I thank y'all for listening. If I can do anything, y'all look me up. Thank y'all. Share the video. Subscribe to the channel. Love to have you. Love to have your support. Prayer. I love for y'all to pray that the ministry will continue. I thank y'all for watching.